basically the consumer knows spring as, as mustard season. So this is actually what's going on in Napa today. And I'm curious, Sam, you know, ground cover, cover crop, your, your philosophy on that. And because and, people say, oh, I don't do anything or I, I disc twice a year. I do this. You know, what have you learned over the years and, and what do you bring to Terra Valentine? Yeah, yeah. so up, up in the hillside vineyards, you want to have a permanent cover crop. So that means you're not disking it in. Um, you're you're going to mow it at, at a certain point. Um, but if you disc that soil up here um, and then the rains come in before um, that soil is, has grass growing or the cover crop back established in the fall, you can get erosion. And so on the valley floor, you see those beautiful mustard vineyards. Um, and uh, you know those are um, because they can, it's flat and they can mow that and they can disc all of that uh, mustard in. But uh, it's funny because you know mustard is actually like it's a kind of a very invasive um, plant. It's a it is a nitrogen fixing plant, so it's a legume. It, it will um, you know it does help the soil out. But once mustard is established in your vineyard. There's so many seeds that get produced that you'll basically, even if you mowed that mustard every year before it bloomed, you'll never get rid of the mustard. There's like years and years, decades of seeds that are there oh, um, already. So, it, so in it's, a way, it's, the, like, it's almost. It, it's, it's, it's the creeping Charlie of plants for those of us in the Midwest that you just can't <laughs> yeah, get rid it's of. It's kind of like this endemic. Yeah, it's this endemic cover crop that's that's just there, and fortunately, it's beautiful, and it attracts you know a lot of tourists to come and visit and take pictures in the mustard. So it's a uh, you know it is a uh, you know it is somewhat of a kind of a marketing too now at this point you know to have the mustard season. Um, so I won't be planting any mustard up here. Uh, I guess is the long story. Um, you know we'll we'll have to do our cover crop because it's a permanent cover crop. You need to really fine tune it for your site. So, um, oops, sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, my neighbor's dog came over a little puppy. Up here. So. <laughs> that does not, it sounds like Cujo. Yeah. There, dogs are outside now. <laughs> All um, good. So, so you've got to pick a specific cover crop for up there. What, what are you going with? Yeah, so it'll, it'll be a blend, you know, it'll be a blend of different grasses. And, um, I've, whenever I've done any, um, you know, areas where I've cleared and put, I've, I've been working on kind of a native grasses. I'm a big fan of, of California has these really wonderful native grasses. So um, what I'm trying to do is do as much of that as, as possible, um, which different, a couple different fescues um, and, uh, and some wildflowers as well. And so when, it, when up here in the hills, because you're doing a permanent cover crop, it's also important to look at um, doing, uh, you know, it, attracting beneficial insects because there are, there's a lot of pest pressure up here. You know, you're near these forests and riparian habitats. So you do have a lot of bad pests that can come in from the, the shrubs and the chaparral in right. your vineyard. So um, they, there's insect, they, we, we kind of every, you know, six or eight rows will plant um, an insectiary row, which is a bunch of different flowers that attract beneficial insects like certain uh, parasitic wasp uh, species that will go in and they'll they'll eat and and, and they'll, they'll feed off of the larva of these invasive um, pests that come into your vineyards so so there's a you know it's a it's a reasonably complicated approach to the cover crop up on the hills but we always mow it down you know by in the spring but we never disc it in so you're always you always have it's like your your lawn you know a nice lawn in the vineyard um, versus having a, a, in the valley floor, they'll disc all that cover crop. You right. Know, all that mustard gets disced into the vineyard. Well, I think it, you're right. It's interesting because you have an entire differently, a different ecosystem up there. And you also have to pay attention, as you mentioned, to the invasive insects that come in from the forest. And you've got to mitigate that by planting certain cover crops in, in every four or five rows. It's a fascinating little dynamic ecosystem to just add to the complexity in the wines. And again, it's, they aren't doing this at, uh, you know, 200,000 case production. I'm telling you that much right now. So it, it's, I don't think they're doing a lot of uh, ground cover crop management. Yeah, well, I mean, it's interesting because it's, you know, even on a large scale, it does become very important. You know, if you have a, um, you know, if you have a, a cover crop there that's, 
that's stealing water from your vines. You know, there's a lot of cover crops that will drink up all that water in the spring. And then all of a sudden you're going to have to water or irrigate your vineyard sooner because of that, like that moment. So even on a large scale, I mean, they are thinking about cover crops for sure. I mean, but it's more about, you know, a dollars and cents decision based right. on exactly. you know, how to, you know, utilize their resources the best way versus for me, it's more about more of a, like kind of this, you know, sustainable holistic approach to how we're farming in conjunction with, you know, you know, our environment up here. 